packs. First round hit. Impact. Hey, Sniper Side here. I want to talk variations in temperature and how to adjust for them. Question came up in the forum. Somebody had traveled to a competition and they felt that their dope was off due to a temperature variation. So how do you account for that? Well, there's a couple ways. There's the old school way of actually going out under these conditions, recording your dope, writing it down, and then comparing it to your other conditions. Um, I'll give you a prime example here. Normally when you see these videos in the summer, we're at 8,000 density altitude. Our temperature is anywhere from 85 to 95 degrees and we're at 4,000 feet above sea level. Today it's 40 degrees out and our density altitude is 5,000 feet above sea level. So density altitude is telling the bullet where it thinks it's flying. So the higher you go up, the thinner the air, less parasitic drag, bullet's going to fly a little better. That's why I get some really good far shots out here because the air is a little thinner than if I was on the east coast at sea level. Now calculating that, there's density altitude charts out there and you can use these. These are great to use. You also can print them up online. And just to give you an example, at 8,000 feet density altitude, I need about 5.5 mils for a 260 going 2750. Now, today, because it's 5,000 feet DA, I'm using six mils. So that's about a half mil variation between summer and winter here today. So this DA chart is telling me that because I'm able to run the density altitude. Now I write this stuff down in my notebook, dope, data on previous engagement. I can look, okay, at 5,000, I needed to use six and not 5.5. If I go to a location, that's only 2,000, well I'm gonna have to adjust it again and probably change it a whole another 0.5 uh, up. Traveling to the East Coast, your cores, your K&Ms, I usually lose about that half mil in the summer between here and there at 800 yards, that's pretty typical. But with software, you're looking at the difference between your zero conditions. Today, I zeroed this rifle up, brand new barrel, had to get it all uh, doped out. So I zeroed it up. Today's conditions are my zero conditions. Now, when I go around and travel or things change, that becomes my current conditions. Your zero conditions for that track stay the same. Your current conditions change with the conditions. So depending where you go, what the temp is and what's going on, you put in current conditions, your software is gonna manage it. Or I can look at the information in my data book and if I've gone to a new location, the day before I'm shooting, I can pull from weather underground or anything like that, what the prediction's gonna be. I could put that into something like JBM, print out a pretty basic chart. My muzzle velocity's not really gonna change. I don't have to worry about that. Um, so I can put that data into JBM and print out a chart and have it. A lot of times when I go to matches, that's exactly what I do. I print out a match chart, and this is one from a match right here. I print out a match chart, and that's uh, the conditions for under uh, those circumstances, like this was from Core with a 260. So I know what's going on here, and this was printed out that way. Uh, this was a, um, again, another 2750 with a 65, and that's giving me all my details. 800 yards there was 5.7 mils. So summertime core, 5.7. Here, summertime is 5.5. So you see the variations that I'm using. 
do your homework, record the information. You'll almost always see in my videos, I have stuff written down and I'm recording information as I'm shooting. I'm gonna dope this rifle out 200, 300, 400, all the way out to 14, 1500 yards and record that data. Then when I get back to the office, then I'll create tracks in my software. I don't distract myself on the range with software, with calculators, with phones. I just get the job done, good holds, shoot, impact record and that's what you're looking to do so don't let the temperature changes scare you it's an easy fix density altitudes a good one number current conditions in your software is another way to tackle it and then writing it down data on previous engagements guys are always asking for rule of thumbs uh, something to look at just in the context of this rifle it's about 0.1 mil per 10 degrees at 800 yards right now. So if for a 10 degree change in temperature, I can use 0.1 mil plus or minus. If it's hotter, subtract. If it's colder, add. And that'll help me stay in the ballpark on, on the target. Another thing to look at when doping rifles out, people are always asking for tri-dope. Uh, the rule of thumb with a 6.5, is about 0.8 mil per 100 yard and that's after 300 yards so 400 would be uh, 0.8 more than 300 500 is 0.8 more for a 308 you're looking at about 1 mil or 4 MOA so between 500 and 6 it's that 1 mil or um, that 4 MOA and that'll get you to the next yard line then it starts to change at 800 again you'll start adding a little bit more as you go out but I'm basically taking these rifles and, and using 0.8 with a 6.5 and 1 mil per 100 yards. And temperature wise is about 0.1 per 10 degrees. Uh, that's just something that I'm looking at. With powder temperature changes, you're usually pretty safe between 0.3 feet per second per degree to 0.5 per feet per second per degree. So if you're gonna put powder temp in, it's usually around that 0.3 to 0.5 uh, feet per second per degree and then the software can manage it for you depends whether you leave it in the sun whether it's out whether it's cool all those different things but all these things will help you and the more experience you get the easier it is to transition from one condition to another thanks for watching enjoy